Greetings. Today using raw therapy, I'm going over using the selective editing in the program. So I'll go about this a little bit differently. There are quite a few videos explaining how to use selective editing. For the image, you can see here that I've taken a meter reading of the light using the Seconic light meter here. We can see the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO here. So if I come up to the information, we can see it matches up to the reading of the light meter. The aperture 6.3, the shutter speed and the ISO value. So I'll just close that there. So the image we'll be working on here is of the i1 Studio. Let's first go to the selective editing. And we can see here, if I just scroll down, we can see I'm using shadow and highlight. So this is what we're going to use within the selective editing. There are other tools, but this is just the shadows and highlights I'm going to be working on here. Now, if I come up and I'll turn that off, so we can see here with the lighting that I had, we can see the gradual fall off of the light to the darker area underneath the x right text. So if I just scroll in here, as we see here, the silver metallic color, we can see how the light and shadows hitting the metallic color within the i1 Studio, we can see where it's bright and darker within the texture within that paint there. So when using this, we're going to make some adjustments using the shape detection, also the scope so let me just press F to fit the screen there. So again, if I turn it on, we can see it's a little more even from the I1 Studio text down below the x right text there. If I turn these on, we can see on, I've just named them 1 and 2. So at the moment they're not visible. I'll just turn these on. We can see how I've made two selections. The first selection here, I'll just hide that again. So this was the first selection. And I've just duplicated this and brought it down so instead of creating the, the effect again, I could just duplicate it and bring it just a little bit lower as you can see here to even out the, the light from the bottom here to just above the i1 studio text. So what I'll do, I'm going to start from the beginning. So I'll delete these and we'll start again. To start with, activate the tool by just clicking on the little button here. Click on add and we can see the tool show up on the image. Now other people have done very detailed explanations of how to use this tool and they go into quite a bit of depth within this, but I'm just making it very simple. First off, as we can see, our tool lights up in red, and we can see there the up and down, left and right, and we can move the tool there. We need to either be in the center or on the side there. So let's just bring that down. I want to first make the selection just under the studio writing here. So I'll just scroll in a bit here. And as we can see, we have four points. So let's just change this here. And increase the size of our selection. Hopefully in the future they'll add more points or create a brush tool for this effect. But for now, this is what we have. So we can see here, this is the area that I want to start to bring the shadows up to make it a little more even. We have our spot size here. We can increase this here or make it smaller. But for now, we'll just leave it about that size. Now we need to add the tool. So let's go to Add Tool, Shadow Highlights. In the shadow and highlights, we come down and we change it from equalizer to shadow highlights. 
we can see here our highlights, our shadows here. Now we want to activate the preview. Now we can see the green on the image within this selection. And what shows up in green is what the tool will affect. So if we bring up the shadows, it will affect these areas here. Now we want to refine this a little bit more. So let's go to shape detection. I'll just adjust this a little bit more. Not so much affecting the top here, but the lower half of this section. I'll just change this a little bit more. Now we'll just go to the decay and we'll start to increase this to start to refine where we want the shadows to be lifted up. As I mentioned, the, the paint within the image, the metallic flecked paint, we can see how it's actually affecting the preview and this is where it will be applied to. So if I turn that back off again, we can see it's more down to the bottom section here that we want to adjust. So we can turn this preview off and on as we need to just refine this a little bit better. So let me turn that back on again. Increase the decay there a little bit more. Leave the decay there and I want to reduce the scope here a little bit. So let's just Increase that just a little bit more there for the bottom edge. We'll just increase the decay just a little bit more. So I'll leave it about there. We'll turn the preview off. We can see that's roughly the area that I want to make the adjustment to. So let's turn that on again and off. So I'm reasonably happy with that selection. So now let's scroll down and come to the shadows. I'll start to increase this here. You can see that it's starting to even that out a lot more from the top of the I1 Studio text towards the x right text here. Now I want to duplicate that. So let's scroll to the top. I'll just rename this and we'll just call it 1. And then I'm going to duplicate that and we'll call that 2. Now I'll grab hold of that duplicated selection and start to drag that down. We can see how that's evened that out a lot more now from the text on the studio down below the x right text. Just finer adjustments. We'll just bring this in a bit more. If we need to, we can bring that up a little bit more. So now I'm going to scroll up to the top and we're going to hide the tool. So hide the duplicate and we'll hide the original. And now turn the selective editing off and back on. So now we've made the light a little bit more even on the i1 Studio. So that's how I use the selective editing using the Shadow on Highlights in Raw Therapy.